and his snare drum. So if you could just come up and put me up momentarily.
after a few decades of this, the pine grove gave up the ghost and died away completely. By, by Granny's time, there wasn't anything left of the spot save for a few stunted trees, some windswept grass, and on certain dark nights, dim bones. Dem bones are the skeletal crew of Captain Kidd. According to my granny, they come sailing up in a ship made of shadows. The ship moves silently up the coast at the dark of the moon and anchors near the shores of Sandy Hook. Two or three boats are lowered from her side and they're filled up with the eager forms of glowing skeletons wearing cocked hats and tattered buccaneer guards. Around their waists are belts full of pistols and long cutlasses. It's the biggest of dead bones. The one that is probably the first mate has a skeletal parrot perched on his shoulder. Dem bones carry heavy trunks full of treasure onto the shore and scatter them all around the place where the pine grove once stood. Then the pirate crew hauls out kegs and kegs of whiskey, and one of the skeletons takes out a ukulele. A phantom fire is lit on the sand, and the bones start a rowdy singing and dancing of the noise will wake the dead. If they weren't already. When they're exhausted from the dancing, glowing skeletons collapse on the sand and start telling stories about the ships they've captured and the treasures they've amassed. Some of Dem Bones open the big trucks and take out jewels and ropes of pearls that adorn themselves. Others toss gold coins back and forth as if they were a child's ball. At the darkest part of the night, just before dawn, Dem Bones pack up the truck and row back to the ship of shadows. One by one, the glowing skeletons disappear into the hole. The ship draws anchor and sails away.
rabbit bag by Neil Gaiman. Before you take me up to bed, will you tell me a story? Do you actually need me to take you up to bed? I asked the boy. He thought a moment, and then with intense seriousness, yes, actually, I think you do. It's because of, I finished my homework, and so it's my bedtime, and I'm a bit scared. Not very scared, just a bit. But it's a very big house, and lots of times the lights don't work, and it's, it's sort of dark. I reached over and tussled his hair. I can understand that, I said. It's a very big old house. He nodded. We were in the kitchen, where it was light and warm. I put down my magazine on the kitchen table. What kind of story would you like me to tell you? Well, he said thoughtfully, I don't think it should be too scary, because then when I go up to bed, I'll just be thinking about monsters the whole time. But if it isn't just a little scary, then I won't be interested. And you make up scary stories, don't you? I know she says that's what you do. Oh, she exaggerates. I write stories, yes. Not, nothing that's been published yet, though. And I write lots of different kinds of stories. But you do write scary stories, don't you? Yeah. The boy looked up at me from the shadows by the door where he was waiting. Do you know any stories about Click Clack the Rattle Bag? I don't think so. Those are the best sorts of stories. Do they tell you? Tell them at your school? He shrugged. Sometimes. What's a Click Clack the Rattle Bag story? He was a precocious child. You know what precocious children can be like, don't we? And was unimpressed by his sister's boyfriend's ignorance. You can see it on his face. Everybody knows them. I don't, I said, trying not to smile. He looked at me as if he was trying to decide whether or not I was pulling his leg. He said, I think maybe you should take me up to my bedroom and then you can tell me a story before I go to sleep. But a very not scary story because I'll be up in my bedroom then and it's actually a bit dark up there too. I said, shall I leave a note for your sister telling her where we are? You can, but you'll hear when we get back. The front door is very slamming. We walked out of the warm and cozy kitchen into the hallway of the big house, where it was chilly and drafty and dark. I flicked the light switch, but nothing happened. The bulb's gone, said the boy. That always happens. Our eyes adjusted to the shadows. The moon was almost full, and blue-white moonlight shone in through the high windows on the staircase down into the hall. We'll be all right, I said. Yes, said the boy soberly. I'm very glad you're here. He seemed less precocious now. His hand found mine and he held on to my fingers comfortably, trustingly, as if he'd known me all his life. I felt responsible and adult. I didn't know if the feeling I had for his sister, who was my girlfriend, was love, not yet, but I liked that the child treated me as one of the family. I felt like his big brother, and I stood tall. And if there was something unsettling about the house, I wouldn't have admitted it for the world. The stairs creaked beneath the threadbare stair carpet. Click clacks, said the boy, are the best monsters ever. Are they from television? I don't think so. I don't think any people know where they come from. Mostly, they come from the dark. A good place for a monster to come. Yes. We walked along the upper corridor in the shadows, walking from 
patch of moonlight to patch of moonlight. It was a really big house. I wished I had a flashlight. They come from the dark, said the boy, holding on to my hand. I think they're probably made of dark. And they come in when you don't pay attention. That's when they come in. And then they take you back to their, mm, not nests. What's a word like nest but not? Uh, house? No, it's not a house.